This next demo is going to be an example of what I call uh, single stroke casual lettering, also nicknamed funny car casual because I used it on a lot of the race cars in the 70s. But it's a, it's a nice alphabet, it's fast, it's very easily readable, and it's kind of fun to do, I enjoy them. Paladin the brush. And off we go. As you can see, it is all single strokes. Coming in from the left with the brush well chiseled. In, down, snap to the right. In, down, snap to the right. Yeah, the brush I'm using is a number seven lettering quill. It's actually by a company called Langnickel, which unfortunately they're no longer in business, but I had bought up a big supply of these years ago. There are brush companies out there like Mac, and I believe that uh, Krumbacher might still be making brushes. Uh, there's a lot of good quills on the market. I'm just kind of spoiled with these. I've had them for years. But these letters have a nice snappy look to them. That's why I like them. They look like they're going 100 miles an hour when they're sitting still. And I'll give it the mighty stroke at the bottom. Push down a little more, you can get a bigger letter out of the same brush. And this all has to do with palleting. One brush can probably do three or four different letter sizes if you palette correctly. I'm also using what's known as a mall stick. It's an old sign painter's tool. Comes in very handy. I learned on the stick back when I first started. And what I like about it is it keeps your arm and your hand elevated from the work so you don't run the risk of smearing your hands through the lettering that you just did. It also gives you a little more brush control. And I've set it up to have a little workstation. Everything's right where I need it. I got my paint, my thinners, my palette, my stick, all in my left hand. I just call that economy of motion. And there you have the single stroke lettering. I did take a little time to lay this out beforehand with a Stabilo pencil. And here's how we do it. All your downstrokes are thick, all your upstrokes are thin.
up thin, down thick, snap to the right, up thin. Yeah, the brush I'm using here is another lettering quill. I believe it's a Solo Horton. It's been cut down. I customize a lot of my brushes for different uses. I usually trim around the heel to remove some of the excess hair so it's able to do these thin upstrokes. Now I'm gonna pallet it a little heavier here so I can get a larger script letter out of this second line. The key to good script is a consistent lean on all your letters. The last thing I'm doing here is the tail piece of the G where I actually find it better to do this particular thing without the mole stick. Uh, I basically float the brush over the surface. I have to thin the paint down a little more, make it a little wa more watery, and really work with the tip of the brush. The palleting technique I'm going to show now is uh, brush blending on the palette. And what that is is actually taking a base color and loading your brush. And then you're going to add a secondary color by dragging it through the other color on the palette, just on one side of the brush, which is going to give you a, a blend like this. And I'm gonna use that on this example. I'm gonna do some really condensed, quickie chrome lettering using this technique. What I'm gonna start with is the sky tones, which would be a, a blue fading down into a white. I'm gonna hit all the top sides that would be reflecting the sky tones on these letters by coming in
And what I'm using here for a brush for this particular technique is a wider quill. You want something that's going to be able to give you the entire stroke at the width you need and maintain a good blend. This is actually a very condensed version I'm doing here. You constantly have to reload your palette and recharge your brush. So what I've put in now is all my sky tones. The next color I'm going to apply would be your earth tone and your horizon. And this gets put on the bottoms of all the letters, anything facing the ground. Because what I'm actually doing here is a prismatic letter. It's kind of peaked in the middle and everything from the one side of the peak faces the, the sky, the other side faces the earth and the horizon. So I'm just mixing up a nice neutral warm gray and I'm going to just drop a little bit of black into this, a gray black. And this is going to give me my horizon and my earth tones.
and you can come back on all these strokes and actually embellish them. You can put little gradients in all these strokes just to give them a little more of an earthly feel. Doesn't have to be perfect. You want to have a little bit of interplay in some of these colors to give it a more reflective look. I'm just kind of having fun with the brush, just putting in some loose random reflections. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a smaller quill out, a type of a liner quill. It's another hot rodded one that I made where I trimmed it down so it would pull some nice thin consistent lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch these letters up because with the brush blending, you're very limited on how tight you can keep your corners. You're more concerned with keeping the blends consistent rather than keeping your corners tight. So at this point of the game, I'm going to come in and just kind of tune the letters up with all the colors that I did use, but all with line work. And what this also does is it helps define the chrome by putting little bits of extra lighter shades that aren't blended into certain areas to give it just a nice reflective look. You can kind of see how this kind of punches this little corner up where it was kind of dark. And then just come around. The bottoms of the letters, it helps pick them up a little bit. You can help delineate some of your corners here. I'm going to do the same thing with the sky tones. Now we follow all the outsides of the sky tones with this lighter blue, which just, just helps punch up this side of the letter as well. Just gives it a little more life. Thank you. 
I'm also going to hit the centers of the convex at the peaks to just clean those up. And that takes care of all your tightening up of the letters. The last phase of this is going to be some highlighting using a bright white just to designate hot spots in the letters and maybe some random reflections throughout the lettering. This last application is what really brings the letters home. It kind of makes them pop, puts a lot of life in them. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick out certain areas where the light would be coming from and actually accentuate those with a hot spot, which is where the light is most concentrated on a curve or in a corner. And light is kind of like water. It follows a, a trail. It concentrates in certain areas, and it kind of flows out till it dissipates. Comes in light, picks up strong, disappears. Just like water flowing in a little gully. Follows the trail, picks up strong, flows out again, almost disappears. Here's a real sharp corner. Your light's going to come down. It's going to catch in this corner and kick to the right. It's going to catch this corner and kick up to this corner. Catch this corner, come down. It's going to pick up strong in this little corner here. It's going to come across. It's going to kick up strong in this corner. It's going to droop down. It's going to catch in this corner, and it's going to flow off to the right. If you think about it just like water flowing on a contour, it'll kind of help you understand how light works. And what you'll also pick up are secondary reflections. Could be from anything. Uh, another edge on the letter, small edge, might catch it right in here. 
little in here. And you can just kind of have fun with the reflections. You can put little odd hot spots in a couple different places because it's not necessarily always one light source. You might have a main light source, which is the sun, which gives you all these strong ones, but you might have reflected light coming in from other areas that could give you these secondary hot spots. And then a little trick that kind of looks nice if you don't overdo them or to give it a little bit of a when it comes to the Little starburst, less is more. You don't need too many of them to make the make the point. What I've nicknamed this little effect poor man's airbrush. You never know when your compressor's gonna break down or the power goes out. And you might have to be able to execute chrome lettering without an airbrush. And I've used this on many occasions and it works out very well. Once you get it down, it's not really that time consuming. And it's, it's a lot of fun, I enjoy doing it. And there you have it. I'm Glenn Weisgerber, I wanna thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at the getaway in Las Vegas in October. Yeah, the brush I use for this demo, and it's probably one of my favorites, uh, is a MAC number two blue thread sword striper. Been using them for years. The, it's the workhorse as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate four uh, basic pinstriping strokes that uh, you can use for pretty much any design. First one I'm going to show is a, uh, a straight stroke, top to bottom, land the brush, pull, End. Second stroke is going to be an S curve, left and then back to right, left, back to right, back to left. The third stroke is going to be a left curve, back to a right. The next stroke is going to be a right back to a left. Now pretty much these four strokes can be used in, in any classical pinstripe design. I'm going to do a quick little design using these strokes. I'm going to start with the S stroke. Now I'm going to reverse that stroke, go the opposite way. I'm 
and use the C stroke here. Come back, meet the bottom. Come down, cross, come back, meet the bottom. The straight line strokes can go in any direction. They don't have to go straight down. They can come down on an angle. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to come down. I'm going to ride through the middle. And I'm going to come down this way. Ride through the middle. And now I can keep building with these strokes here. I can come back in and trail this first stroke down. Same thing with the left one. Come down, and I can repeat this same thing again, coming through here. Come down. I can actually come back with an S. A lot of times when you do these, the beauty of pinstriping is that it's very freeform. You might decide in the middle of a stroke that you want to change where it's going. It doesn't always have to be something you have to follow through with. Very loose form of artwork. I find it very relaxing when you don't put yourself in a position to be restricted. Just let it happen. And we're going to keep building these strokes. Now I'm going to take this stroke and turn it sideways. I'm going to bring it right around. And up. There's always room for a little touch up. Nothing comes out perfect every time. There's no rule that says you have to get it exactly right in one shot. We can take these strokes here, stretch them out a little bit, and make a teardrop stroke, which is very popular on these designs. Come down, point. Come down, point. You can build on this. I call it kind of an Art Deco style. You keep repeating this design left to right. You drop it down a step. Drop it down again. back in and do any little fine tuning you need to do. And there you have basically the first color for the design. And I'm going to add some succeeding colors to this to try to really bring it home. Okay, we're going to add the second color to these uh, exercises and to the design. I'm going to start by doing something that it's very important to be able to strike another straight line next to the first one, keeping the distance between them the same and the line structure and weight the same. So we start at the top, we come down, to the bottom. Same thing with the curve. Coming down, keeping your weight of the line as consistent as you can, as well as the negative space in between. The curves here I'm going to connect, because that's a very important tool to have in these designs. I'm going to start here with a point. I'm going to come out a little bit of space, back in to a point. Start at a point, come back out, 
Come back to the left, point. This is where I'm going to utilize the second color on this design. I'm going to come in here and pick up these curves, doing a similar exercise to what I showed here. Opposite side. I'm going to work with these shapes here. Right, back to left, point. Left, back to right, point. This one here is going to work right in this spot here. It's going to follow this line. It's going to come down, and it's going to converge into that curve. Same thing on the opposite side. Follow this line, down, point. One thing I forgot to mention on these previous ones, another good thing to learn is the teardrop using a solid stroke. You start wide, push, pull down, lift the brush, snap. This will come in handy right on this stroke here. I'm going to fill this little void here where it's black. I'm going to come down, push heavy, lift, point. I'm going to do a curved version of the same stroke in here. And you can have fun with these. Like I said, it's a very loose art form. Nothing is planned out. I know I have no clue what I'm doing here. I'm just creating. And that's the fun part. There's no script when you're striping. It's letting the last stroke dictate the next stroke. And a lot of times you'll find that as you're working, it'll just kind of unfold for you. Try to keep an eye on negative and positive space and keeping your layout balanced. That's the important thing. And there you have a second color. This demo is just a small example of what I'll be teaching at the Airbrush Action Getaway. I know looking at it, it looks difficult, but by the end of the class, I'm gonna make things a lot easier for you. Thank you for watching and just one more thing if you want more relaxing stuff um, i have a free newsletter that i sent out every sunday there i share relaxing and uplifting stuff that i enjoy and i think you could enjoy as well like ideas books and uh, resources but also asmr and unintentional asmr so uh, you can find it at findcom.com sunday